skipping on into the next topic here, we've got some story about the coronavirus affecting DJs. This is from a DJ called uh, Post Human who kind of tweets some really amazing stuff about just in general about the industry and advice for up and coming starts, up and coming DJs who kind of want to get into the industry, tricks of the trade, um, some stuff that you should know about, loads of gems. He's a really solid dude and he's always kind of free with the information. And he kind of got talking about something that I kind of never thought about, you know, when it comes to electronic music and the coronavirus. As you guys are aware, there's a global, is it, is it pandemic or epidemic now at the moment with the coronavirus, a virus that kind of originated from a, a region in China called Wuhan that's now been spread across parts of Europe parts of north america parts of um england as well and um, for some reason hasn't touched africa at all which kind of led people to cons- have a conspiracy theory that black people are immune to coronavirus but in general it's a virus that's kind of wreaked havoc and really kind of um made i think people who weren't aware of how globally connected we were as a world be aware of it right um it's affected parts of the industry that you wouldn't really think they'll be affected um and obviously you know big events where gatherings of people are kind of join up and celebrate things are really being called into question I, I remember reading a story about an italian school or italy in general considering closing some of their schools down for two weeks of precautionary measure loads of things are happening to kind of make sure that this thing doesn't get as worse as it is and obviously um a big part of it has been affected at the time now is festivals <coughs> as i'm sure most of you are aware festivals in the last few years have kind of sprung up all over the world festivals now are starting a lot sooner than they would have done maybe in in years or decades gone by so it feels as if now i think a lot of these have said before in the past i think possibly i've mentioned it too that festivals even though they're annoying even though they might be not the most uh, creatively fulfilling place to be to even though they might have i don't know um an abundance of people who don't necessarily give a shit who you are as an artist and it might be a bit of a cash grab it still represents probably the best opportunity for a dj to kind of earn the main chunk of their kind of take home money or salary or kind of income would come from a festival i I kind of uh, relate a little bit to like i remember saying someone saying the same thing to me about in fashion supposedly there is this thing which i'm aware of from somebody else in the industry i'm not sure if it's true maybe they were lying to me but supposedly a lot of the really high flying photographers in fashion some of the kind of biggest names that we know out there um most of them make their actual big money or the actual big coins on doing campaigns for like h&m or like i don't know boohoo or like fashion nova but just doing it on like a on like a need to know kind of like non credited uh, underground basis. So they'll do the photography campaign. They won't tell anybody it was them. It won't be on their CV or anything. But they'll reach, they'll get a lot of money for it, and then that will then allow them to then go and do a campaign for Arena Plus Home, a campaign for Vogue Britain, for Vogue US, uh, ID Magazine, Days of Confused. They can do all those kind of really kind of um, uh, or even campaigns for brands. That would kind of pay for them them doing their mostly artistic stuff. That's so I'd imagine festivals are maybe the same sort of thing for DJs where they go to play at Coachella or they go play in Glastonbury to make the big bucks. That then allows them to go play in some kind of shoddy bar somewhere in the middle of Ukraine. But it's got like a really good vibe. It's got cool promoters, a good crowd, um, that sort of thing. So Posthuman sort of spoke about that a little bit. And I thought there's some interesting points here that he laid out that I want to quickly comment on first tweets here it says the following a major issue will be um so if someone put us posted here andrew rice i think he's one of the uh, writers for ra i'm assuming right yep north america resident advisor um i just said not sure we collectively realize how bad this affects the dance music industry um coronavirus i'm assuming again if there's so much disruption at such an early stage it could get a lot worse a chance for club scenes to focus on local DJs on, on the one hand but bad news for Tony. it was very true i think the same sort of thing is happening same i've had the same sort of inkling or feeling when it comes to this new uh regulations or yeah regulations that have come into place with uh britain uh pulling out of the eu with, Bre- with brexit being fully enforced that you know um most DJs are going to require a visa to come and perform in the uk of course for more touring djs i think you have to be fair in the uh, um with their feelings or with their kind of disappointment that a lot of their main chunk of their money that they make in a year does come from them touring i'd imagine so i think it works the same way in comedy in most things anyway right you get the most amount of money from going on tour going on the road because for the most part the place that you're going to don't necessarily see somebody of your talent level going there a lot they want to pay a premium to get you and secure your services and you can essentially kind of bang out loads more of those kind of sets or those gigs in a short period of time back to back and then come back and sort of like you know do the local scene just to kind of keep yourself tied over but a main chunk of your money has already been done that way so it's a really cool way to kind of earn a living right you can kind of go out make um go on the road for two months come back home and you're basically sorted um but then i thought the brexit thing will be a good thing for local deals because it means that there won't be as much competition i guess with european or touring world acts 
So it would mean that promoters will have to be a little bit more because promoters in general don't want to spend any more money than they're already spending, right? Hiring the venue, security, door, especially in the UK, there's so many costs that go into running a night, especially if it's not in like a, especially if it's not in a ready-made club space already, especially if it's something that you're putting on yourself. Like I can only imagine what it must cost for Boiler Room to keep putting on their shows, you know, week in, week out, especially in London. It's, it's insane, which I think is why they've got that building that they've kind of rented that kind of turned into the kind of London HQ um, because renting out these kind of cool, interesting spaces all over London just takes too much time and money to do, especially the right way. So I think what it would do is encourage local promoters who are, you know, not necessarily, I guess local promoters in some way, shape or form can sometimes be the enemy and sometimes the, um, you know, the godsend, the angel for the scene. Because on one side, they could always keep pushing touring acts because they want to make money and they don't want to lose money on their acts, on their fucking promoting night, on their club night, sorry. They want to guarantee they get a certain amount of people through the door, so tickets, or merch, whatever it may be. But on the other side as well, it could also push local DJs to kind of go out there and make their own club nights kind of sprung up in around it, right? I think that might be kind of, kind of tension that's happening. So... With less competition, more local DJs can kind of spring up because they don't want to lose money, so just kind of hire them in general. But it also could affect the qu overall quality of the nights in London because it could mean that loads of local crappy DJs who not who have no right being on the stage in those kind of clubs are playing, which kind of leads to an overall bad product. Because I think, in my opinion, I've got always got the assumption that you know iron sharpens iron, right? You want to be in the scene, like you want to you want to try and make as a DJ in Berlin, you want to try and make as a DJ as a comedian in LA or New York. Because that's where all the best comedians are, right? You want to go where the best comedians are. You want to go where the best artists are. And you want to try and cut your teeth in that kind of shark-infested water and see if you sink or swim. That's just to kind of learn whether or not you're good enough. And also kind of make sure your learning curve is full. You know what I mean? It's super steep. So that's kind of one of the issues. But again, um, it might be a, a good kind of unintended consequences that, you know, some of our more smaller towns and cities in the UK are able to kind of shine a light back onto some local talent and they're able to kind of, you know, step up to a plate and make sure that the scene kind of continues on. But again, you know, it's only clubs, it's only club nights, it's only going out, it's, there's bigger problems out there, but, you know, as a way to kind of deal with it, it might be an initial way to kind of address it. So Andrew Rice says, we're not sure we'll collectively realise how bad the effects of the dance music industry could be. Again, if there's no such disruption as such an early, if there's so much disruption as an early stage, it's very true, it could get worse. A chance of clubs seem to focus on local leaders on the one hand, but bad is the touring. Cool. And posthumous is the following. A major issue will be uh, people simply staying at home, declining ticket sales, uh, even for events that still do run, which is very true. Yeah, going to public transport or going to a supermarket is still probably as dangerous as nightclub. And I noticed when I went to Bergheim the other day, right? Um, I went to Bergheim last week and I'm pretty sure it was a lot more empty than I remember it to be. I went right to the front of the DJ booth when Nazira was playing and I had loads of room. No one was barging me. I was perfectly fine to dance there. I had loads of room to dance around. It was perfectly fine. It was awesome. I fucking loved it, right? But I also remember thinking, wow, I remember when I was here, this is probably a bad example because, you know, it's fucking DJ Harvey. But when I saw DJ Harvey play in that main Bergheim space, you couldn't get past the the speakers are hanging like to the right hand side next to beyond where the bar is you couldn't get past that line it was that full you just, i just had to stand right at the back where the kind of box plinth style next to in front of the kind of rail gates i couldn't get further than that it was just too packed to do it you know sometimes when you're in a club space and you just can't get through because it's just too full i just couldn't do it and this time around it was a lot more emptier and i'm not sure if it was because of the coronavirus people didn't want to travel they didn't want to be in a they didn't want to be in a place where you know, especially in an airport, mostly, you know, you're, you're breathing in everyone's fucking oxygen. You're in a sort of quote unquote controlled environment. Um, but yeah, I did, I did notice one of the biggest clubs in the world, you know, was a lot more empty than it was previously. That could be a thing. It continues here. Uh, Plus, uh, many touring DJs um, have one or two big festival shows that pay and tie on smaller gigs as part of that. With bigger festivals are likely uh, first things to cancel. A lot of smaller promoters may be cancelling cancellations of their bookings, which is very true, which might lead to a lot of people kind of losing out on a lot of money in the back of this. I spoke with a busy mainstream DJ friend yesterday and their opinion was from April onwards, they expect their bookings to only be 50-50. Jesus Christ. I'm watching the news carefully and kind of expecting to to myself. He says the thing is, uh, he says you can't afford to not be gigging and I have a lot of money already outlaid. But perspective, a lot of industries will suffer. Tourism to sport, conferences to catering, which is very true. You already think it was sport. I think Serie A has already postponed a few games. If it kind of kicks off in the UK, they're going to postpone it straight away. We, we don't play when it comes to that sort of stuff. 
despite what someone like Boris Johnson is saying. And um, yeah, and tourism again will suffer too greatly. I, I'm not sure how Asia is going to kind of recover as well. That's the one part of the country or the, of the world, or the region of the world, I'm sort of like really have a lot of sympathy for. Once this does get rectified, once the vaccine is found, once people are starting to get a lot more better and they start to understand what's happening, how is how soon do you think people are going to be comfortable to go back to Asia again? really think about it because it's a it's already one of those kind of places that you have to really be into traveling to go to right it's not like you're going to fucking florence or something to go to southeast asia to go to like the philippines vietnam south korea thailand japan china right these aren't places that you'd go to just on a whim there are places that you go to like because you have a, an absolute deep um love appreciation for that part of the world you want to experience the food the culture the religion just the society how it is in general you just want to see it with your own eyes so i'll imagine this sort of thing would really scare people the fact that it's originated from that part of china it would really put people off to going in the first place and i just don't know how they're going to recover from it man that's the one thing i'm really kind of nervous about them for that respect um it continues here it does make me sad though he said that a lot of small independent outfits will be the ones that who who can't ride this out and will be the one other side with just the rich kid promoters still as andrew rice initial tweet points out time to book a local act which is very true of course this is always the case though isn't it the people with the most money people with the most means could probably cush everyone's still good like you see with fly b recently right the um regional um airline thing that we have here in the uk they've unfortunately gone bankrupt to go into administration it doesn't matter how much money you got if you don't operate a business in a good sustainable uh way you are also going to suffer the wrath you know of the fact that you might go into administration and you know be out of a job too so that isn't something to really get that wrangled about people are always gonna people with the money are always gonna have most more cushion but in the end um the the the, the scene is really plumped up is really kind of put on the pedestal is really supported by the smaller djs the smaller promoters the smaller festival um organizers event bookers they're the ones that really kind of sustain the, the platform because they allow the promoters for the bigger festivals to see what's bubbling because if i keep booking this amazing local girl that's really smashing it and i get her some more gigs I'm, i eventually get to play the cause and some guy who manages some big festival and has got all the money sees her playing then he books her that's a win for me too because i allowed her the platform to do it she obviously with her talent smashed it which allowed her to then get seen by other people and then it's essentially it's a kind of cyclical thing so i don't think it's a bad thing i don't think underground artists should stay underground forever i don't i don't think underground promotion should be underground forever either but i think they do service the industry and like they allow people to kind of enter into the in you kind of enter the scene one way because i think it works the other way around too i think some people go to big edm glitzy firework festivals um see them for what it is think it's a bit naff and then try and look for something a little bit more uh underground something a little bit more real right so something with a little bit more of a community towards it um uh, something with a bit more of a scene and then they kind of find these kind of smaller festivals so they wouldn't have found they would someone some people would have never found a how to unless they went to like a tomorrowland right that's how they would have found Houghton because they went to tomorrowland like oh this is too much then they got to like oh wow it's got all the elements i like about tomorrowland but in a very smaller intimate uh kind of personable way and i'm you know and i, I can build a community around that i can find love of my life find friends for life that's all kind of a thing that happens as a content conservative so i don't think there is any kind of reason to kind of point oh the rich kids are going to be better off it's like eh, whatever who cares about them you know what i mean continues here um a major factor is the music scene doesn't all doesn't have the ability to deal with lawsuits or put safely measures into effect uh like football stadiums or disneyland despite clubland being way down the list of actual risky environments i expect it'll be one of the first to suffer which is definitely true and hopefully again but again hopefully it doesn't it doesn't get as bad as it is i, I think the good thing is that because a lot of the festivals happening in the beginning uh, maybe some of the festivals are, don't, I won't say most popular, but I guess if you're a bigger DJ, some of the some of your kind of more better paying gigs are going to come later down the year. So as Post Human said, he did a fair mention to him from April onwards, he's kind of thinking it's going to be 50 50 for him in terms of gigs. So I assume some of the bigger festivals that you'd play are happening maybe towards April onwards or towards May onwards. So there is a thinking that they could be a rectif they could rectify the coronavirus by that time or they could have a way of kind of cont containing it up until that time i think i remember someone saying that the earliest possible time to probably find a cure is um to 2021 right next year uh, early jan jan next year so who knows man the landscape might change really quickly by that time uh, there might be a, a way to contain it but again i think for the most part the reason that they could probably really worried is that isn't you know the fact they're going to contain it it's the fact that this virus has probably done a lot more in terms of scare tactics for the public than it has done in terms of actually impacting people's pockets so 
I mean, sorry, I'm impacting the actual festival to get cancelled. So let's get taxes will leave into festivals, and you know, no one wants to travel halfway across the road to go play a festival where there's no one there. Even if you do, even if you're getting paid, you know what I mean, like I think most of you can agree. But I think I'm even at my local bar DJ level. I know, you know, how hard it is to play and to kind of entertain yourself when there's no one in front of you dancing or having a good time. So imagine how much more if you're like a successful DJ playing somewhere and you've got literally no one looking up at you. You're just looking up at, you know, at people that work at a festival, you know, tidying up and shit. That could be annoying. But yeah, um, hopefully it gets sorted out very, very soon. Let's move on. Um, should we talk about the coronavirus hate crimes? That's a really crazy thing, isn't it? Like there's a mad video actually here. Of people getting beaten up because they got coronavirus. I made a compilation of it, which I'm not really sure if this is real or not. But I'll quickly play a bit of it now. I think you get demonetized video when you talk about coronavirus. I'm a smaller channel. Um, there's somebody here kind of hitting an Asian person yo, 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 now, Again, I'm not too sure. These videos are always kind of misleading because you don't know. It's like that video of that truck in the middle of somewhere in a city, somewhere in China, where they're kind of spraying all the buildings with antiseptic and shit. I think someone told me that was a video from some another time. It's not really something that's happened now. People are just splicing it together, making it look like it's happening nowadays. So I'm not sure if that's true or not. So these videos taking a pinch of salt, but it's quite scary to see how um, how everyone's descending into madness, isn't it? Tell the move. Because he's standing right fucking next to me. I don't want him under me. People are going Tell crazy. I don't know what's more offensive. Or well, not more offensive. It's a precautionary measure. And I think that's that's a weird thing we're getting with. When people are getting offended that people are going out into the world wearing like full blown, you know, um uh hazmat suits and you know proper industrial grade face masks and shit. Um or the stuff that you see someone wearing at a power plant in Chernobyl back in the day, right? But you know self-preservation isn't it and also i think the idea that because there's some people out there who are just taking it so they're so laissez-faire with the whole coronavirus thing they think it's no big deal which i don't really understand either so maybe this is probably an adequate reaction to it right it's an adequate opposite reaction to people who are like oh it doesn't matter like not all chinese people are got coronavirus I'll, i'm still gonna go eat my local chinese and support them and then there's other people on the other side who are like nah they take they you know it's the kind of person that if you cough they're gonna move on the other side of the train or get off the train and walk somewhere do you know what i mean so, so, so I guess it is what it is. This black guy here is getting really aggressive, but an Asian dude looks like on a train, looks like it's New York. I hear by the accent. What are you gonna do? He's gonna hit him. What are you gonna do? He stands back. What's he gonna do? He tells him to move. He's not moving. What's he gonna do? To him? Nothing. Oh, was he spraying himself? Why is that? Why is that? Why can't I sit next to you? What is spraying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's spraying him with antiseptic or something. It's so fucking bizarre, man. <laughs> and just imagine the roles being reversed. Just imagine there was some sort of virus that affected black people, or that affected, or that started off in a country that was a majority black people, and this is what happened. Just imagine the outrage. Just imagine, man. It's like. <sighs> Sometimes when the lack of humanity and sympathy people have with people is just shocking. Someone's pushing an Asian person, punching random one in the street. Some passenger comes and hits him. Some passenger comes and hits him. For no reason. Some passenger comes and hits him. That's good. Well done, Michael. That's good. Well done, Michael. 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 Well People act like it's not help. They don't want the help. Exactly. I've been homeless a long time, and I don't beg and ask for nothing. Yeah. I make a way every day for myself. Exactly. Top man. There's more stuff happening here. Another kid getting trampled, I think, somewhere. I don't know why they're doing this. But, uh, again, it's just a, it's just a, it's just a, it's just a real representation of humanity in general. Right? People are so different. So, 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 uh oh, he's scared, OG. Crack your shit! What's he doing? Walking up to an Asian dude. You hear that, nigga? Get your fucking ass! There's a black guy here with a stick. Is it a stick or a shovel? What's he got in his hand? I'm not sure if it's a stick or a shovel. He's been egged on by the crowd. Pointing at him, moves away. Of course, he wants to hit the video. Of course, it is. Go get your fucking kid! Jesus Christ. Still hitting him with a bat, with a stick. Another one, too. They're on the train now, arguing. Yo, uh, yo, yo, go sh oh, shut up. Make me, the black woman says here. Come on, make me. One one by one, make me. Kiss my ass. <laughs> make me. Go back to your company. All that communism. <laughs> go back to your...
Only in America can you tell someone to go back to their country and they can legit and you can you can say that with a straight face, isn't it? When you're an immigrant, because I guess it's a country full of immigrants. No one's really got a claim to a land unless you're a Native American, which you know we know how that story ended. It's mad you can say that, and you can't really say that in the UK. People just laugh at you, right? If you're a black person, you told someone else to go back to their country. You're like what? <laughs> You're an American now. What does that even mean? <laughs> the Asian guys been really good. We eat dogs as well. I think this this is a funny video. I think he, I think this is a comedy thing, right? Pouring water on him. Is this a comedy thing? And the guy chases him forever. He's really fast as well. He runs after him quickly. And then he grabs him and they just keep giving over it. But yeah. Someone who covers her mouth. There's an Asian person who's sitting straight next to her. But yeah, man, crazy shit, man, crazy shit. Let's move on, man. This 